What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KNMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you're new to the channel or you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Guys, I got an email a little while ago. It was actually for Mailbag Monday about getting started in Whisper, and I thought uh, it's a good topic. Maybe I should just make a, a standalone video for that because I think it'll be helpful to a lot of people who uh, either are new to digital modes or just haven't done Whisper or whatever. I'm kind of just getting my feet wet in it myself, so by no means am I an expert, but I'm enough to, to be dangerous and at least help you get started in it. So let's dive in. I want to show you a little bit about it. If you've already gotten onto digital modes like FT8 or something, you're already 99% of the way there. If you haven't done anything, I'm going to give a brief overview into the software and uh, then we're going to dive in. But by no means, I'm not going to go through every little detail of getting set up. There's plenty of videos on the internet already about how to get the software set up. So without further ado, let's hop over to the desktop and let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to Google and type in WSJT-X and hit enter. This top one here from uh, physics.princeton.edu, that's where you're going to download this. I'll leave links for the description for everything that I can. And we're simply going to scroll down to around here where it says installation packages. Here you can see Windows, Linux, and Mac. I'm on Mac, so I would use this one. But if you're on a different operating uh, system, go ahead and pick whichever one is right for you. Now, I am going to assume you have the wherewithal to install software without my help. So go ahead and download and install the software. Once you do that, we can now open up WSJTX. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is go up here into settings. So you can click on the WSJTX menu. Now, on a Mac, it's under Preferences. Under Windows, it's under Settings. Everything else is going to be exactly the same. So you want to make sure you fill in your call sign, your grid location. I have these boxes checked, you know, some of these. But the more important part is uh, the radio. Make sure you put whichever radio you're using. I'm on an ICOM 7610 now. But they've got just about every radio under the sun. There's even some of the Zygus. I think a G90 and stuff is under here too. So pick your radio. And you're also going to need to find whichever port you're on to select that. And make sure that you find your baud rate and make sure that matches the radio. Under audio, it could be a couple different things. Mine is USB audio codec. If you're using some type of USB sound card, it would probably say USB sound card or something like that. So you're going to need to find those out. And again, there's a lot of more in-depth videos on how to get WSJTX up and running. This is not one of them. Now we're going to see at the very top under mode, we want to click that. Here you can see we've got FT8, FT4, blah, blah, blah. All the way down here, click on WSPR Whisper. And that's going to open this up. Now, this is all the screen is. There's also a waterfall display that you'll see on uh, JS or uh, FT8 as well. But this is the meat and potatoes of it now. I want to turn on my uh, radio view here real quick, and I want to show one important thing before we get started, because we will be transmitting and listening with this mode. I'm going to hit the tune button really quick, and I want you to pay attention right here where it says ALC. Okay, We want to use this slider to adjust the ALC to just barely reading. Okay, The reason we do this if we had our ALC high, so for example, if I crank this up, now our ALC is high. We want to have that low. If your ALC is high, you're going to actually be splattering on the bands and uh, basically transmitting outside of your, your bandwidth, and you'll, you'll be splattering and causing interference over other people, much like overdriving an amplifier. So we want to be good stewards of amateur radio. Make sure you set your ALC. Uh, it looks like you're turning the power down. You really aren't. I have the radio currently on 8% power right now, and I am putting out 5.76 watts. And uh, really, by having this set, you make sure that you're, uh, you're not overdriving anything. If I crank that all the way up, I'm putting out 6 watts. So really not a big difference. A clean signal is better than a powerful signal every day of the week. Now, a couple things to note here right in the center. You can see we have the transmit. This is your frequency here. And that just is the bandwidth here on the waterfall. Now, I've never needed to change this. Uh, I just always left it where it is, and I've had great results. But that's where that is. Now, here we also have the transmit percentage. So uh, depending on how long you want to transmit, sometimes I've jacked this all the way up to 100% when I'm doing tests just because I want to get you know a couple transmissions all in a row and uh, I don't really care about receiving. But right now we're just receiving. You'll notice I have this upload spots uh, button checked. And what this does, so right now we're just receiving. 
So Whisper works two ways. We can check how well our antenna receives. We can also check how well it transmits and we can see where we're hearing and where we're getting out to. And it's a really great tool. Uh, it's not going to give necessarily a real world indication of like if I'm going to hop on phone right now, this isn't really going to show me necessarily where I'm going to make contacts to. This mode is really going to show me where my antenna hears and transmits to, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make a contact with another mode. It's more a way to, uh, to get a visual representation of where your, your nulls and your peaks are in your uh, antenna system. Okay, that's really the goal of this. So I have upload spots, and you'll notice this bar down here. So Whisper's kind of slow. It, there's two minute transmit and two minute receive cycles. So by adjusting this transmit percentage, if I just want to transmit, transmit, transmit for a few minutes in two minute increments, I can change that percentage. You know, if I want to just do three two minute transmissions, I'll put that at 100%. And every two minutes, it's just going to transmit, transmit, transmit. Okay. Right now, we don't have anything in this box up here. This is where we're going to start seeing stations as we start receiving. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit. And I'll come back when we have some stations and I'll show you what this upload spots does because right now we're listening. I want to harvest information for where my antenna is listening. So we'll come back when we have some things in there and I'll show you we can move forward with that. Okay, so now we can see we've, re we've received a few stations here. So now let's hop over to whispernet.org. Uh, again, I'll leave all these links in the description. And let's just click on map. You don't need to, you don't need to sign in. We're just going to click on map here, okay? So now we can scroll down. There's a lot of parameters we can set. So I'm just on 20 meters right now, so I'm just going to leave it for 20 meters. But if you want to change a particular band or hit all or whatever, you can do that. And I'm just going to put my call sign in. Latitude and longitude, that's going to control where uh, the map shows up. Uh, you can kind of center in on where you are. And you can change your time period from 10 minutes to an hour, 12 hours, 24 hours. I just want to hear the last 10 minutes, okay? So just where are we getting out? Then we'll hit update. So now you can see on this map, let's get rid of this guy. We can hold down command or on a Windows computer control and use your mouse wheel. You can zoom in here on this map. So you can see these are all stations that we have heard, whoops, uh, just in that little bit of transmission. And as we let this go, we'll hear more and more stations. So that's right now we're hearing a few stations on Whisper, but a uh, few in the east part, some up north uh, in Minnesota, another guy in Colorado, and another guy in Arizona. So that's where we're hearing right now. So again, a great tool to see where your antenna is receiving, okay? And now you can see another transmission's gone by. And we can actually hit refresh or update rather, and this will probably populate with more. Yep, see, now we've got more stations. And again, as time goes by, this will just start filling up. Uh, but notice, because I only put this on 10 minutes, it's only going to report the last 10 minutes. If I go back to, say, the last three hours that I've been listening today, hit update, you can see here's all of those spots. So then this is just on receive, and in transmit, we can do the exact same thing. Now, conversely, on the transmit side, I'm going to uncheck this upload spots, and I want to transmit. So I am going to change this to 100% for a minute. And I'm going to hit transmit next. And the next time this goes around, once this uh, little blue thing should be any second now, we'll see the radio going to transmit. It is see the red transmit light. Again, I'm putting, I'm putting out my meter uh, says about 5.8 watts. Um, I've done 10 watts. I mean, I guess technically you can do whatever you want. It's weak signal, not low power. That's a lot of people get confused with these digital modes. You typically don't need to use a lot of power, but... If, if you need to boost up the power, you want to, go right ahead. There's nothing wrong uh, with that at all. So this is going to transmit for a couple minutes. And I'm going to let this go for a few cycles. I'll spare you waiting um, the six minutes for this to get finished. And then we'll come back once I'm done transmitting. And we'll look at the map again and see where we got. Okay, so I transmitted three times. Two minutes each. You can see up here uh, each time I transmit. Everything's time stamped. Uh, I, I did start transmitting a fourth time, but I, I hit Halt TX if you need to. If you hit transmit and you want to stop, hit Halt TX, and that's how you can do that. So transmitted three times. Now let's hop over to the WhisperNet, and I'm going to hit update because I've got my call sign and everything in there. And now look at what happened. All of these stations around the world or country, or it looks like some DX out there, 
uh, are hearing us. So we got all the way out to Hawaii. Look at that. And somewhere down to Central America, Costa Rica, it looks like. Florida, Maine, all the way up into Canada, way up there. All over the West Coast, East Coast, all over the place. So you can see... Now, I'm on a Nelson Antenna's 49 to 1 NFED half wave that's above my house that's radiating east and west. And you can see the radiation pattern is radiating east and west a little bit here. It's, it's, I mean, it's pointed like due north and south at the nulls. So uh, sometimes we don't get so good into the Dakotas here and all that. But uh, pretty good east and west here, which is where I want. I like to chase DX and I want to get into Europe. So uh, that's why it's pointed that way and that's the direction of my house but what a neat little tool so great for comparing antennas I use whisper to compare uh, in another video that I did comparing uh, if you can make uh, vertical antennas directional by aiming the counterpoise or, or radio wires in a different direction and see what happens there so whisper is a great tool for experimenting with antennas you know we have things like easy NEC modeling software to kind of show us what an antenna should do but this software really gives us the meat and potatoes of what your antenna actually is doing. Another thing we can also do, let's hop over here to database. And so we saw a map, but maybe we wanna see who is actually hearing us. So we have two different things, call and reporter. If I'm listening, I'm gonna put in reporter, but since I'm the one calling, I'm gonna put my call sign in and we can go, where the heck is it, and hit update. And this is gonna give us a list of every station that heard us, our signal report, uh, their call sign, everything. So we can see uh, how many spots we have up there. There's, there's a lot of useful information. Me, I like looking at the map just to see where I'm getting out. And uh, sometimes one thing to note, if you go to this map like right after you transmit, not everything might be uploaded yet. So uh, give it 30 seconds or a minute or so and you'll probably see more stations pop up as uh, it gets populated. So we'll hit update again here just in case but uh, it's been a couple minutes. So that is a brief overview of how to use Whisper. That's it, I mean, it's, it's very basic. Um, that's pretty much it. And like I said, if you just wanna do a good thing for others, just leave Whisper on receive, make sure you have that upload spots checked and go off and, and be, do about your day and you'll be listening to other stations and helping others out, just like all these stations are helping me right out by by me being able to hear them and and uh you know it's it's a two-way street so cool little program and uh you know sometimes if you just want to transmit you know the default is 20 percent so if you want to just kind of see where your antenna is getting out over time you can leave that on and uh, you'll transmit 20 percent of the time then 80 percent of the time you'll be listening out for others and helping others uh, test their antennas too so I hope that was informative enough to help you get started in Whisper. I, I really have just started using it uh, this year, and I haven't used it much, but it's, it's definitely been a very useful tool and a program that a lot of us already have, WSJTX. Who the heck is not using FT8 right now? It's taken the world by storm. So just another one of the digital modes already built into WSJTX, but a very helpful tool for those of us who are into antennas and propagation and want to see where everything is getting out. Anyway, guys, if you find this kind of stuff useful, hey, hit that thumbs up, hit subscribe, like it, share it with your buddies, and that just tells the YouTube algorithm that, hey, someone found this useful, maybe we'll suggest it to someone else and help spread the good word of amateur radio. Guys, until next time, thanks for watching, and we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.